Whether you're a first-year gardener or a 30-year gardener, pests can be a huge problem that will rob you of the precious food you are trying to grow. Today we will be discussing an easy way to prevent pests organically, companion planting. Companion planting is growing different crops together to benefit one or more of the plants to control pests, attract pollinators and other beneficial insects, maximize growing space, or to suppress weed growth with the goal of increasing crop yield. If you've ever grown tomatoes, you're probably familiar with tomato hornworms. These nasty invaders of the garden can completely annihilate your tomato plant over only a day or two if you don't catch them. And while tomatoes are their preferred vegetable to munch on, they will also dine on your peppers, eggplants, and potatoes. So you want to make your garden as unattractive as possible. The five-spotted hawk moth is the very pretty adult that lays eggs on your precious tomato plants, which will hatch into those despicable hornworms. But you can fool the hawk moth into passing by your garden by planting basil in between your tomatoes. If you've ever grown basil, you know how aromatic it is, and it is the scent of the basil that confuses the hawk moth mama when she is looking for a place to raise her young. Because she can't smell the tomato plant, she flies over your garden to the next one down the road to lay her eggs. If you're a good friend, you will tell your neighbors to plant basil in their gardens also. I love basil, and I would plant lots of it even if it wasn't such a great hawk moth repellent. But last year, I planted at least two or three basil in each row of tomatoes, and we had maybe two or three hornworms the entire season. This year, I'll be planting basil all around the garden, especially around my tomatoes and peppers and other nightshade plants. And I need to thank Brian Lowell for providing me with this great information. Brian wrote this book, Companion Planting for Beginners, that has been a gold mine of information. Every gardener at every level of experience should get this book. I will leave a link in the description so you can get one. While some plants repel detrimental insects such as hawk moths, you should put in some plants to attract predatory insects to kill the insects that want to destroy your garden. Welcome to the Old Mayfield Place. I'm Snow the Farmer's Wife and I teach you to be more self-sufficient in so many ways, such as growing your own food, using herbal medicine, and preserving food for long-term storage. Predatory insects are kind of like the garden police. They keep the harmful insect population down by killing them in various ways. Some insects eat other insects. Most people have heard that ladybugs are one of the best insects for keeping aphids under control. In fact, one ladybug can eat up to 5,000 aphids in a lifetime of three to six weeks. During that time, the female will lay around 1,000 eggs, which when they hatch, each will also eat about 5,000 aphids. In addition to aphids, ladybugs eat spider mites, white flies, and beetle larvae, so you definitely want these in your garden. Plant yarrow, fennel, and cilantro so they know that they are welcome. Parsley, dill, and Queen Anne's lace will attract parasitic wasps to help your garden grow. Parasitic wasps help control bad bugs by laying their eggs on the larvae of aphids, white flies, leaf miners, and hornworms. When the eggs hatch, they eat the host from the inside out, killing them. Sounds like something from a horror movie, doesn't it? Parasitic wasps are so tiny you probably won't see them, and they do not sting humans, so you don't have to worry if you're allergic to stinging bugs. Planting marigolds in cosmos will help you attract praying mantis to your garden. These bugs that look like aliens from outer space eat all kinds of insects, both the good ones and the bad ones. So while it's great to have some around, you don't want too many. Colorado potato beetles can destroy your potato plants before the potatoes have a chance to develop. And Mexican bean beetle larvae love to snack on your legumes such as green beans and peas. But if you plant your beans with your potatoes, the potatoes will repel the Mexican bean beetle looking for a place to lay her eggs. At the same time, the beans confuse the Colorado bean beetles so that they will just move on looking for a place to lay their eggs. Another benefit to planting beans and potatoes together is that potatoes are high nitrogen feeders and beans fix nitrogen into the ground. Beans and potatoes are really good friends. Another way to keep destructive insects off your food crops is to give them something they like better. Planting trap crops from 3 to 10 feet away from the plants you're trying to protect can lure the bad bugs away to munch on something they like better while leaving your food alone. 
Squash bugs and squash vine borers can destroy your squash and melons quickly if that's all you have on the menu. But what they really love is blue Hubbard squash. So plant these about 10 feet from your pumpkins, cantaloupe, and zucchini to keep those plants safe. Cabbage worms will not only infest your cabbages, but any brassicas such as broccoli and cauliflower. So if you want to protect them, grow some colors to entice the cabbage white butterfly to lay her eggs on them instead. And make sure that you have your trap crops ready around three weeks before your food crops so that the little devils will be happily munching away on the sacrificial plants before they even know that your real crop is around. Thank you for stopping by the Old Mayfield Place today. Stay prepared, control those pests, and have a blessed week.